Are you sitting on a stash of tools that you never use? I've been known to hoard a good AppSumo deal or two, and I, with the process I'm gonna share with you, I've managed to cut over $1,200 for my annual operating budget. Uh, so if you want big savings yourself, stay tuned because in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to use this tools audit process for your own business and your own wallet. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Haley. I am a content strategist helping you create more profitable, purposeful, and productive content. So if that's what you're looking for, make sure to click the subscribe button below for regular value packed videos every single Monday. So down to the business at hand, what is a tools audit and how the heck did I use it to save more than $1,200 from my annual operating budget? So a tools audit is a process of reviewing all of the tools and subscriptions that you've signed up for in order to make sure that A, there's something that you're using regularly and warranting the cost of them if they're a paid tool, or B, if there's a better solution that you could be using instead to save you time. And as we know, time is money. So save you money in that way as well. I wholeheartedly believe that a tools audit is more than worth the time of actually going through and collecting those tools because it helps you have more money and more money that you can be using in your business in other places or put back in your wallet for your family, right? To help you enjoy the perks of being a business for yourself. So I want you to notice that I didn't say save. I said helps you have more money because there are really two main non-illegal, non-windfall ways of making more money, earning it and the frequently forgotten spending it more wisely, right? Which I think is all about what a tools audit is about. So I'm not saying that you should go without the things that you want or need, but simply that you should question what you want, question those wants, especially when it comes to tools and subscriptions, because we often sign up for them on the hope that they're going to be this holy grail of solution that's going to solve all our problems. And then we a never open it up again, or b never use it in the first place or fall off the wagon with it. And it just becomes something that we continue to waste our money on. So I want you to I want to encourage you to go through this tools audit process. It's something that I do on a regular basis, just to make sure that I'm not falling into old tools hoarding habits again. So I'm going to walk you through a five step process to find out. So step number one, I want you to create your template and I have a template below that you can download and this is my tools audit template, but you can also create your own. I recommend something like a spreadsheet or Airtable or Excel. Here are some of the criteria that if you're not going to use my template, which is a Google Sheets template, I want you to make sure to include in your X axis or the um, things that you're measuring. So I want you to put down the name of the tool have a column for the category. Is it paid or free? What is the renewal cycle? Is it something that you pay for monthly or annual? Was it a lifetime thing? What is the renewal date? What is the cost monthly or annually? What is the purpose of that tool? What is a link to the tools login or access info? What is your usage ranking from one to 10? What is your happiness ranking from one to 10 with that tool? Any notes that you have, and then finally a decision. And we're gonna be using each of these columns in this process I'm gonna walk you through. So once you have created your template or downloaded mine, we're ready to move on to step number two, which I want you to just gather all of the names of your tools. I don't want you to get stuck in the nitty gritty of gathering all of the payment information or anything like that. I want you to just get down all of your tools. So basically we're doing a big giant brain dump of what all those tools are. So I want you to think, sometimes it can be helpful to think in terms of categories. So what are the marketing tools, admin tools, project management tools, admin, financial tools, video tools, design tools, social media tools. I could go on and on. Website tools, team tools, productivity tools. So I want you to gather all of the names in that spreadsheet. Don't worry about the other columns for now. First, start by writing down any that come to mind. Next, I want you to go through any of your email accounts and see if there are any there that you could be gathering. So I like to go through my receipts folder um, and see if there's anything there. Then I want you to visit any place that you typically buy your tools. So if you uh, have as much of an AppSumo problem as I do, you can go in to see the tools that you purchased, your past purchases, and that can be a great way of gathering those tools there. Next, you can go through all of your bookkeeping 
bookkeeping records and for tool receipts. And then finally, if you are, you know, saving things to a bookmark folder, you can also grab them there as well. So those are just a few places to look. So step number two, I want you to gather all of the names of your tools. Then we move on to step number three, and we're going to get to use those columns now. So once you've gathered the names of those tools, so you've gone through that tedious process of kind of creating that giant list, it's time to fill out the rest of the spreadsheet. I want you to go and put in all of the payment information. First off, is it a free tool or is it something you pay for? Is it something that you pay for monthly or annually? What is that payment amount? And then what is the payment frequency? Next, what is the purpose? So what are you using? One of the reasons I save so much money from doing this is because I found that I was paying for about four different tools that did all the same thing. Not smart. By putting down that purpose, you're going to be able to see, oh, this does Instagram, this does Instagram, this does Instagram scheduling. So you'll be able to find some duplicates that you might have as well, which are going to make it really easy to decide on if you should cut something. Next up is category. So can you add a category for that tool? So is it an admin or financial marketing, productivity, communication design? You can decide on what your categories are. Next up, access info. I always like to have the link to access this tool. That way when I'm doing the tools audit and I need to cancel something, it's really easy. Or if I'm thinking, oh, I need to go check out that tool and see what it actually does. I haven't been there in a while. It makes it really easy to go and check that out. So once you're done gathering and filling out the rest of the details on those tools, it's time to make some tough choices. So it's time to score those tools based on how frequently you're using them and how happy you are with them. So we have the usage score and we have the happiness score and both of them graded on one to 10 scale, 10 being happiest, one being it's horrible. <laughs> I need to get rid of it. So for usage, I want you to put down one to 10. Is this something that you're using all the time? Is it something you've never used or only used seasonally or as needed? So for me, when I'm doing my podcast, I use a program called Wave to create these little wave graphics of my podcast guests and interviews. It's only something that I need seasonally because I'm only podcasting on a once a year kind of basis. Next up, happiness score. So on a scale of one to 10, how happy be, are you with this tool? Is it the best thing since sliced bread? Is it something that you hate every time you, you know, have to use it, right? You always wish that there was a better option out there. So go and put in those scores. And that is step number four which is gonna prep us for step number five, which is cancel, keep, or add. So it's time to make some key decisions. Are you going to cancel, keep, or add to any of the tools? Because sometimes you might find like, maybe you need to add more tools. Maybe you're missing something, or maybe you're putting up with something that's horrible. So first up, cancel. I want you to go through each of your, your tools and decide which ones you're going to get rid of right off the bat. Start with the tools that have a low happiness and usage score. A common trap that entrepreneurs fall into, however, is hoarding tools. So keeping something just because they think they might use it one day or later on, resist the urge to fall into that because you could always sign up for it later. So if any of the tools you're canceling, I want you to log in right now and cancel them. Um, if there are some you're not sure of, put that tool on probation by updating it in the decision column. And it could be something that the next time you do a tools audit, if nothing has changed since then, if you haven't used it since then, you can cancel it at that point. So second is keep. So which of the remaining tools, the ones that you're not canceling right off the bat or putting on probation, which of the remaining tools are you going to keep? You start with the no brainers, those with high happiness and high usage scores. Then I want you to go through the rest of them and mark the ones you want to keep. And then finally add. So are you missing any tools or from the tools that you put on probation? Are there better options out there? So this is that your chance to do a little bit of research, maybe ask your friends and your biz friends what they're using. So this is your chance to sign up for those tools. So we're not all about cutting. We're also about getting you the right tools in your tool belt so you can save time, make more money, do more with the time you have in your business. So inquiring minds want to know where would you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 as a tool hoarder? Please make me feel good here because I would give myself a reformed 10, um, but I'm now probably a three that frequently falls into six. So I wanted you to tell me in the comments what you rate yourself as a tool hoarder. And if you want more videos like this, click on the next video on your screen and make sure to subscribe for new videos every single Monday.